Hello everybody and welcome back to Wake Forest Football here on NCAA Football 14 here in Dynasty Mode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to year 6, I believe it's year 6, off-season slash off-season part 1, whatever you want to call it. Today we're going to be going through weeks 14 and 15. We are going to see who the Demon Deacons play in their upcoming bowl game, their third straight bowl game. We're going to upgrade our head coach. We're going to take a look at the final standings for each conference, or at least the big name ones. Actually, we'll just take a look at all of them because they all matter, right? We'll take a look at the top 25 as a final, and then we'll end up with the finalists for the Heisman this year. As you know, Desmond Wortham has been... Uh, not Desmond Wortham, I'm still back two years ago. Wayne Haynes has been a absolute monster this year and last year. Uh, last year he got his name known. This year he's been all over it. Uh, we'll see if he wins, but there are plenty of good guys to go around. So let's get to it. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe. And uh, comment down below what you think of the offseason. I'm going to be changing some things up. I'll discuss it in part two. But for right now, let's get into this part. So, week 14, 2018, the Demon Deacons finished 8-4 on the year. Their last win was against rival Duke. They won at home at BB&T 30-20, partly because of Wayne Haynes. He did get hurt, but uh, Roderick, Ed Roderick Elliott, can't even speak right now, carried the rock so well, he got us to that win. And, of course, our quarterback, Dustin Thomas, he had a big part, too, as long with Ryan Caldwell, Matt Bur uh, yeah, Matt Burns was the player of the game, and um, basically all the Demon Deacons did their job. Eric Byers on defense had a couple INTs to secure the win, but we're going to start things off by going into the coach skill trees, and we're going to upgrade our head coach. Now, we are maximizing game management um, basically so far up until, but we're looking at recruiting and... We've got some things pretty locked down, but we don't have that one recruit that we just are mouth-watering over, right? Well, today we're going to be upgrading a little recruitment, and we're going to do the opener. You have an edge on your competition at the beginning. Next level, we increase our points by 500, so instead of 6,000 total points, we will have 6,500 weeks 1 through 7. So we'll upgrade that, and now that unlocks Tier 3. Letter of intent, you really know how to close the deal. We won't focus on that too much. Kitchen sink, your work ethic is second to none. So, you know, 50 extra points assigned to each recruit. That might help in the long run. And then pipeline states. I think once we get all these done down here, we'll move on to pipeline first because states like South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, uh, maybe even as far north as Maryland. They will be in big effect for us. So we will save that. We are now level 22 on our head coaching area. And we've come a long way. So if we take a look at job security here in the ACC, we are just one of a handful. One of six, if I'm counting that right. I am one of six so with 100% job security. We have been at Wake Forest for four years. And, well... It, well, four-year extension, I think we got five years away. So, I think we're in week, year five. I think I said year six. I don't know. We'll look at it. But, uh, again, we're just one of the handful that have the best security in the ACC. Virginia, UNC, Clemson, Syracuse, and Maryland are the others. Maryland and Syracuse probably don't pop out as uh, secure jobs, but they are doing their stuff there. And, yeah, okay, so we are in year six. We're heading to year seven. You can see we're heading to our third straight bowl game. We got a four-year extension. This was our first year under that extension, and uh, we've actually gone to a coach prestige of A-. You see our rivals. We're 9-4. Top 25, we are very good. We are 6-9. and nine. Unfortunately, the bowl record has yet to show up at all. We are 0-3 there in career record. Remember, we're staying our career at Wake Forest no matter what. 37 and 38 so we're actually one game below 500 that is an amazing job that our team has done that our defensive side guys have done that our offensive side guys have done and uh everyone you know in management and recruiting fans obviously a big part so now it is time to look at the top 25 the top 25 
This will basically be set one week. I don't think should change anything. Maybe except for Mississippi State and uh, Mississippi, Georgia, Georgia Tech. Ranked teams, Clemson, South Carolina. But right now, as it sits, Oklahoma is number one in the country. USC second. Iowa is third. Clemson is fourth. They are going to win the ACC Atlantic. Mississippi State 5th, Oklahoma State 6th, Florida, TCU, Georgia, Navy to round out the top 10. UNC, Troy, Air Force, Michigan, Alabama, your top 15. Penn State, Texas A&M, Texas, Pittsburgh, Georgia Tech, top 20. And to round out the top 25, South Carolina, Ohio, Rutgers, Ole Miss, and USF. 26 to I believe 32 it is. Bowling Green, Louisville, Notre Dame, Oregon, Auburn, Temple, Syracuse, Illinois. You see dropped out teams, Notre Dame, Illinois, Arizona, Louisville, Miami, and Virginia Tech. So a very, very interesting top 25 six years later. Conference standings, again, this will basically set the uh, preliminaries, if you want to call them that, for the bowl games. We have to start off the entire ACC, Clemson and Georgia Tech. More than not, they will play for the ACC title unless, you know, Georgia Tech loses to Georgia. And in that instance, Pittsburgh will climb over them. Maybe UNC will as well. In the American Conference, Rutgers and Louisville will battle it out more than likely. Big 12, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and the Big 10, Iowa, Penn State, Conference USA or CUSA for short, Louisiana Tech, and Mid-Tennessee State. So, uh, very good on their parts. In the Independents, Navy, of course, and Notre Dame. Poor Idaho, man. 0-11 did not win a game this year. You gotta feel bad for them. For the MAC, Ohio, Bowling Green, Mountain West, MWC, Air Force, Fresno State, Air Force undefeated in their conference play in the Pac-12 here. I don't know why it's not sorted out. Well, it should be USC, Oregon at the top, the SEC, Florida, Georgia, probably two most dominant teams in the SEC. Sorry, Bama fans, this was not your year. And finally, in the Sun, Boy, Sun Belt, excuse me, Troy and Texas State. So you guys gotta love seeing those underdogs compete year in and out. They only play six conference games, but uh, you know every game is important to them, so they try their hardest. It's all you can ask for from them. The Heisman watch. We said Wayne Haynes has made a name. Well, as it stands right now, he is in position to win the Heisman. It would be the first Demon Deacon to win the Heisman in this dynasty or to even get mentioned. Wayne Haynes was mentioned last year. Now he is a leader. He has a lead over Jamal White of Georgia Tech, over Sheldon Hawley of Air Force, over Mark Fields of Iowa, and over quarterback Tony Long, the only quarterback in it. This year, a little surprising to see from South Carolina. But you see Wayne Haynes' numbers. Uh, last game, we go to more info. Here he is all year long. 280 yards, 1,643. I was about to say 643, but out of one in front of that. Averages just near six per carry. 18 touchdowns. You see his splits from last year to this year. Absolutely an upgrade with Desmond Wortham leaving last year for the NFL. The numbers just skyrocketed. Yards after first hit, he is a pounder. He's only a junior. He's a redshirted junior, so he will be back next year with us unless he decides to go. And in that instance, if he decides to go, we will more than likely let him go because he deserves all the praise in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Wake Forest, Winston-Salem, not Wake Forest, North Carolina. Award finalists and championship contenders. Won't, look at, won't take a look at championship, but we will take a look at this. For the Maxwell, Wayne Haynes is second. The Walter Camp, Wayne Haynes leads it. That's obviously a trophy for the best runner. The Bednarik, that will go to Jonathan Franklin. Well, at least for now. And third, hopefully he does get it. Nagurski, Franklin goes six. The O'Brien, no wake force guys there. The Walker Award, Wayne Haynes. Bolitnikoff, no Deacons. Mackey, no Deacons. Outland, no Deacons. Remington, oh, no Deacons. Can we get a Demon Deacon, please? 
There we go. Josh Franklin, best linebacker. He's second in that running. Thorpe, no one. Groza, Adam King, best kicker. He has had one heck of a year. You see there, he is 22 for 24 on field goals, 33 of 33 on extra points, and a long field goal of 43. The guy award best returner will, uh, not guy best returner, but guy award, no one there, and best returner, no one there as well. So bowl projections, let's see where they rank the Deacons in a bowl. And we have to go a little bit down to the Belk Bowl. It would be Wake Forest's first Belk Bowl. And currently, they are scheduled against UL Monroe, who finished 5-5 five and 3-2 five and and in their respective conference. So, hey, maybe they can win. I know, what, year 4, I believe, they faced off against UL Monroe, and they beat down the Warhawks. So, hopefully... They can do it again if they do get paired up with them in the bowl game. So we'll advance the week. We'll go to week 15. We'll go to conference championship. And then I think we will round it off there in part two. I will show you what I what I will do with the conferences. Uh, you know, the settings for this year, quarter length, all that good stuff. So, guys, if you're excited, let me know down in the comments below. But, uh... Still a lot to go over. We still got the Heisman finalists. Still got the award winners. We still have bowl games to work out, obviously, depending on this week. And maybe um, next week, week 15. And then we're off to the conference championship. So it should be a lot of fun. I remember this time, uh, feels like forever ago. It was raining. It was storming. It was thundering. So we have good weather this time. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy and have enjoyed the Wake Forest Dynasty. I know we've been a long time removed from where we started and, you know, where we've come from playing LSU, playing San Jose State, playing, um, forget the third team, but uh, the bowl games really are just the main, the main part of this whole team. Okay, so here we go. Team news, we get... Mike Lewis, he's committed to USF. Mikkel Brooks to BC. Tony Cross, we're still in a battle. Mike Beck to New Mexico State. And we get Corey Clark, the lowest rated out of this that we have been looking at or, you know, messing around with. He's a fullback. Probably won't go to our team. And, um, yeah, he was a bust. So, probably, well, he'll go to our team, but he probably won't make the cuts. So now by week, let's take a look if anything has changed here. Top 25. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. And yes, Oklahoma State moves up to 4th. TCU to 5th. Navy to 6th. UNC to 7th. And it looks like Clemson did lose. So let's go see where they fell. They dropped all the way to 15th. They lost to South Carolina, so a big loss for Clemson could have bowl, BCS bowl game implications on the line. As it would stand, you would see Oklahoma and USC in the bowl game. Arguably, you could put Iowa in with that same record, but we'll just have to find out. In the Heisman, did anything change? Oh, you better believe it. Wayne Haynes from first to third. Jamal White, Sheldon Hawley, move up. That is because Wake Forest has bye weeks last week and this week. And the guy from South Gastonia, North Carolina, unfortunately will drop to third. And now you talk about Georgia Tech winning the Heisman. You can see what he did last game against Georgia. They upset Georgia. And he had 30 carries, 200 plus yards, two touchdowns for Sheldon Hawley. 31 carries, 166 and a touchdown. Obviously, when you don't put stats up, you're not going to do anything. I'm actually surprised Tony Long did not move up. They beat Clemson. 400 yards, 5 touchdowns. How do you not move up? Let the committee figure that one out. But that is, that is a shocker. That is genuinely a shocker to all of uh, North Carolina for the Heisman. For the Maxwell... Wayne Haynes will drop to third for the Walter Camp. He will still stay in the front of the pack, but he's got Sheldon Hawley. 
from Air Force, second in the Heisman right now, right behind him. Keep your eye on that as we move on. Any change in the bowl projections? Well, we had UL Monroe in the Belk Bowl, and we have Memphis in the Belk Bowl now. They went 6-5 and 5-3 five and five and in their respective conference. So it looks like nothing else. We will play on December 27th at 6 p.m. The last game on December 27th in Belk Bowl. Um, I don't know where that is, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. That is if we stay through one more week. So in the BCS r rankings, Oklahoma, UNC, USC, sorry, probably. Yeah, USC, Oklahoma. They still have them one, two. Iowa. Um, I don't think they'll get in just because what you're looking at right now for Oklahoma, they beat Texas Tech, but they do have Oklahoma State, so if they lose, I was on a bye week, Oklahoma State has, uh, Oklahoma, yeah, it, it could get very interesting. I think the winner of Oklahoma State slash Oklahoma Probably will move into second, or if Oklahoma wins, they will stay there, obviously. But um, it's a very interesting end to the year. So we'll advance the week one more time to conference championship. I'm trying to get this out as fast as possible. Try and keep it under 20 minutes for you folks at home. Or on the go, wherever you are, wherever your Wake Forest hearts desire you to be. Um, I know you don't want to watch a hour-long off-season episode. But uh, hey, sometimes you just got to roll with the flow. So, hopefully we are near just about done. I will make off-camera adjustments. And, again, if you guys have been enjoying so far, be sure to subscribe. Leave in the comments below your thoughts on the off-season, on the ranks, where you think the committee messed up, suggestions for next year. Uh, we'll enter year seven. My plan, do the full 30-year dynasty, you know? Do the full 30 years. But, obviously... With that, games will come out, new Maddens, but I think there is a feel for college football. It is set deep in hearts of football fans. I think I've told you guys, I think I've told you guys this, college football is just more exciting. Also, there are rumors that um, next year could be a new college football game, so we might have to start Wake Forest all over again. But uh, hey, it's going to be exciting, and college football is a fun, fun game. Even if you don't have it right now, I would recommend getting it because, you know, it's just exciting. You can download the rosters, make your own rosters, do anything you want. But right now, we are in conference championship week, so top 25. Let's see what happens here. Is Oklahoma still number one? They are. They beat Oklahoma State. Iowa is still three. USC is number two. So, I say the winner of this game right here, the winner of these guys' games, if USC wins against Oregon, they lock up the two seed. But if Iowa beats Penn State and USC loses to Oregon, I see Iowa going to number two. So it's Oklahoma, and it's really who wants it more of USC and Iowa in the national championship. The Heisman watch, I expect Jamal White to still be leading. And my hunches are correct. Everyone stayed the same. Mark Young now of Oklahoma has surpassed the other quarterback from, oh, where was he from? South Carolina. South Carolina quarterback. So there's an Oklahoma guy in here. There's an Iowa. There's a Wake, Air Force, and Georgia Tech. Obviously, the quarterback probably will not win. I'm looking at Jamal White winning. Sheldon Hawley, second. Wayne Haynes, unfortunately, third. Bowl projections. Is Wake still in the Belk Bowl? And the answer to that is yes. Now we're playing Indiana, who went 500 on the year, 6-6, six 2-6 and 2-6 six, and six in their respective conference. So I can see a win there in the Belk Bowl. And for Wake Forest, like we said, it is the first Belk Bowl they will go to. They've been in the Military Bowl. They've been in the New Mexico Bowl. And they have been in the Music City Bowl. If we can find it. Uh, there it is. Right there. So we've been in three different bowl games. This will make our fourth different bowl game. I am very excited for it. And, um, you know, we'll go past this. We'll go to bowl season. And we will catch you guys on that one in the second part of the episode. Well, second part of the off season. Sorry, not episode. 
It's been a fun off season. It's been an exciting off season, and we'll see who plays for the national championship. Will we play Indiana? Will we play Memphis? Will we play UL Monroe? It's not decided yet. We've had three different opponents in three different weeks. Will we make it four for four? Only time will tell. Uh, looking at the Elgato, we're just over 20 minutes, so this will definitely be the end here. I want to thank you guys for watching this off season. even if you skip to the meat and potato part of it, like rankings, but um, I'm not going to timestamp anything. I want you to explore in the video and search around. It's more fun that way, right? Well, maybe not for Wake Forest. They had a uh, pretty abysmal season. Saying that, 8-4, yes, we're very good, but uh, the the loss to Fre the loss to Florida State, not good. Boston College, not good. Maryland, not good. Your final standings for the Heisman. Uh, yeah, Jamal White wins it. Sheldon Hawley second, but we have a switch in Fields and Haynes. Iowa takes over the third spot. Wake Forest will hold on to fourth. And Long from South Carolina takes it back from Oklahoma to finish in fifth. Win Haynes only got 849 votes. Jamal White, what did he do? Well, he got 319 first place votes. He had 295 carries, 2,136 yards, 11 receptions, 122 through the air, and 22 total touchdowns. So congratulations to the ACC for winning the Heisman Air Force for coming in second runner-up. Iowa on the podium at third. Wake Forest, unfortunately, will fall below the podium in the cutoff line in fourth. South Carolina finishes fifth. But for Wake Forest, it is just an honorable mention to go to the Heisman presentation. And like we said, we've had four different bowl games. Not anymore. We go back to the Franklin American Mortgage Company Music City Bowl. This time we're playing the Tigers of Auburn. 7-5 and five in the SEC? I believe they are SEC. Four and four conference play. Your team has received a bid to play in the Music City Bowl. The second time the Music City Bowl is coming through Wake Forest in Nashville, Tennessee. So for both teams, it will not be a long flight. It should be a fun matchup. We play on December 31st. And now it's time to add the trophies. Wayne Haynes has won the Walter Camp Award. Wayne Haynes has won the Doak Walker Running Back Award for the best running back. That is very nice to see. Adam King has won the Lou Grows Up Place Kicker Award. And that is it for the awards this year. So three new awards to add to that Wake Forest Trophy case back on campus in Winston-Salem. Guys, next time out, I forgot about the offseason. We'll have the bowl game next time out. Then the offseason. Guys, get pumped up. Bowl game number four, third in a row for Wake, is coming up. It will be the Auburn Tigers. It should be a lot of fun. Um, I expect a high-scoring game, if I'm going to be honest. Leave your projections down in the comments below. And then next week, we will find out who will ride the Music City Bowl trophy. Will it be Wake for the first time in four tries, or will it be Auburn in who knows how many tries? Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one. I will see you.